Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D, dash oracle.com. That's Ord, dash oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, I sent you over a couple of charts. There are actually five of them. Um, we can cover the S&Ps real quick. Okay, which one was that? Is that the first okay, one? Okay, that would be chart. Chart number one. Well, you hit this market big time, Tim. So it's a beautiful thing, brother. Let's let's tell us. Yeah. Let's start with chart well, one. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, uh, well, you know, it's, um, we're in we're in a support area. That blue uh, shaded area. Yes. That blue shaded area is, is where the ticks and trend have reached panic levels. Okay. And panic levels always form a, a bottom in the market. So market's probably going to flip sideways here over the next month or so. Okay. And what's going on right now, we're going into a, a gap area. I got uh, open gaps. I got a, a blue line to yes. that uh, area, and that area is kind of uh, shaded pink. We're into it right now, and that gap had uh, 76 million shares. So it would be important what the volume is today. If you test a gap on 10% or lighter volume, the gap's normally resistance. If you test it on that equal volume, it'll go up to the next higher swing, um, which is basically pretty much where that higher shaded area of pink is, which is that gap up there. I see. So we'll have to wait and see what, what goes on here. I don't think the market is, is starting a bull run here. I think this whole thing is just a big trading range. That'd but, be a nice range, uh, though. That'd be a nice range, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a nice range. It's, it's kind of tricky in here. It didn't quite get... You know, I got it a buy is. signal way too quick. No, it's tricky. I got out There's of that no buy doubt. signal. Yeah. And I, did, I didn't get back in. Uh, but um, I don't think the market's going to go farther. But actually, uh, anyhow, the, the the two pink areas are possibly areas uh, which is where gaps are. That's two, uh, two possible areas where uh, a um, a sell signal could develop. Yeah. But I don't think the market's going to keep going up. You and know what's so cool, why, Tim? What I, what I uh, love what you do here, right? And folks, okay, so let's this picture. If we're in a consolidation, right, what, what tends to happen, folks, is this, is that you could go up to the highs, you know, you could volume that drops off, okay, and then, you know, bottom line, yeah, it wants to go back down. Now, the cool thing is, is that you can see, as Tim has pointed out, that panic area down there, I love how that panic area is down there. The reason being is that, you know, you never know how low you're going to go, but we know that lows are always kind of spike lows. Do you know what I'm saying? Versus highs. Highs can be laying out there for, you know what I mean, six months, seven months going across. So it's pretty cool, you know, looking forward, you know, speculating, of course, of how it may play out. But that would be pretty cool, man, because that's a wide price spread, man. You're talking about, you know, something from like, what, the, the 4, you know, 50 level it's down to the, you know, 433 yeah. level, man, you know? Yeah, that's that's a hundred points. So yeah. it's, it's nothing to sneeze at. No, uh, no, hundred right. points on the SPYs. Yeah, be a thousand points on the uh, other one. But let's flip to chart chart two, and I'll tell you why okay. we're probably not making okay this this rally is going on for well yeah, we we this is a chart we probably shown a couple of different times probably back in oh you know March April of this yes. year. Um, anyhow, uh, I went. What I did here was the top window is the 10-day trend. Okay. And I and then the shaded down area is when the 10-day trend got above 1.2. Yeah. So I, I so that's all the shaded areas. Then I drew a horizontal shaded area to show you where all of those uh, what what levels of the uh, the pan occurred yes. on the SPYs. So. And uh, we talked about this chart before when we came up with a support area between 365 to 390. Yeah. Because that's where the trend uh, reached 1.2 or higher in that price range. So in that whole site, it went, so it went sideways for 11 months. started basing back in May of 2022 uh, yeah, and completed the pattern in April of 2023. So you got an 11-month base. Now, this is, you know, Weisskopf stuff now. So you got an 11-month base. Right. So in general, the market should last around 11 months. Okay. So 
So we're still early in, in the, the rally phase because the market, you know, started rallying in May. We're in August. We've only been rallying four months. Yeah. We should basically rally all the way into probably next March or something. That'll blow some months, you know, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, you know, because that, that's the, the wise cop method because the yep. longer the base, the longer the rally. Right. So anyhow. Right. So, you know, so let's get where we are right now. And I circled that in uh, red. I see that. And so, yep. Yeah. So, you know, so the market doesn't form bottoms until, you know, intermediate term bottoms until that trend gets to 1.2. So far, you know, we're coming in as I did this this morning, we're 0.99. Okay. So even though we've got a panic range going on, it's still on a 10 day average, not high enough to suggest a, uh, a, a base worth rallying out of, at least not yet. Also, we're in the weakest quarter of the year. That runs from basically, you know, August to October time frame. We're in that time frame right now. So we'll probably beat around in this area for the next month, maybe month and a half. And the trend, most likely between that time frame going forward, you're going to see a lot of different days, probably 1.2, 1 1.5, 1. 1. you know, who knows? Yes. Maybe two old trends to get that trend up to 1.2. And once you get it up to 1.2, now you can look for a bottom. And so that's the reason why I'm thinking, even though this rally looks really good and it's like it's going to go to the moon, it won't. And Tim, also Tim the, what, would the be, second, what would be, if you don't mind asking, what would be, like when we're getting up to that highs, do you have a number on the trend at the highs that it may be coming into? A, a, you see the, what I'm saying? The, what, the, the last high we had in... In uh, late July, early August, you mean? No, yeah, th or, what I'm saying is that, okay, let's picture that if we get up to the highs, right? You'd be looking for that trend to be at what numbers versus the lows. You see what I'm saying? Uh, okay, well, trend, uh, normally, okay, the 10-day trend, a lot of times you got to be careful when it gets down to 0 0.9, 0 0.8. Right, that's my question. On 10-day trend. Okay, that's what that's, my question is. Probably, cool. Okay, right. Yeah. All right. right. And so when that starts happening, if you go back and look uh, going into the top of uh, 2022 in January, you had a trend staying down right around that 0.8 range, warning that um, even actually coming off that big top, right. you know, of the, uh, that trend stayed low for the first uh, probably two months of that decline. Yes. Um, okay. If you look at that 10 day trend. So, so anyhow, so we're, we're into this you know, short-term bounce here. And also, I wanted to uh, point out, the second weakest uh, week of the year, seasonality-wise, is a week after Labor Day. Okay. That's next, next week. Okay. So, Pretty well. I know you got 30 seconds here to go. That's good. So, but I wanted to point that out. That's awesome. So, yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are going to be coming right back. And don't forget, you get hold of Tim at ord, O-R-D, dash oracle.com, ord dash oracle.com. We have the Dow Industrials up 274, Nasdaq's up 239, S&Ps are up 62. Tim and I are going to be coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. We're talking on man, Mr. Tim Ord. We are talking markets out here. So uh, what chart would you like to go to, Tim? All right. Uh, so everybody, any questions on the S&Ps? Uh, no, I think that? we get that pretty good for right now. All right. So let's go. Uh, let's go to chart number three. Okay. So... Uh -huh. And we we showed this chart probably over the last couple of weeks. We uh, we showed the money out. The bottom window is the 18-day average of the uh, up-down volume, and these close above minus 10 uh, to get a buy signal. And the next higher window is the 18-day average of advanced decline percent for GDX, and these get above minus 10 for a buy signal. So both those things closed above, um, or at least when I did this chart and they're yeah, they're still above minus 10. So that's on a buy signal. And the blue areas over the last, I don't know, this goes back about a year or so, the blue areas show the times when both those indicators are above minus 10. And the red or the pink areas are the times when both indicators are below minus 10. Yes. So it shows you all the, the buy and sell signals over the last, you know, couple of or over the last several months. So anyhow, so, you know, this flipped to a buy. And so this is kind of a short-term signal. 
And you know what's so cool here, folks? Go you know, ahead. if you've been, you know, listening to Tim and I, you know, the bottom line is that, you know, as Tim's been educating us, okay, the bottom line, you know, we've been watching this chart. He gave you the numbers, and we're here, which is it's so cool, Tim. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, you're right. We're here. Also, I wanted to point out, I got a gap uh, circled in there. Yes. And that that sideways box going there I is see how that. big that gap was. Yes. And if you, if you notice, it filled the gap. Right. Stopped almost exactly where the bottom of the gap was. And uh, I thought that was kind of interesting. Turned up. And then if so, we, you know, and if we, if we, if we look at that too, and do a Wyckoff deal, that gap, you know, had fifty-six million shares, and we tested it on eighteen million. <laughs> How's that? Yeah. 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 Exa exactly right. So you tested a gap in lighter volume. So he had some clues that gap was probably going to be important to really get the confirmation. Oh, you need. Uh, everything to turn up. You yes. know, it, it didn't get the exact bottom, but, uh, you know, but when it does give signals, those signals are usually pretty good. Right. Right. So, pretty cool. you know, so we hit the gap, we did it on lighter volume, and now both those indicators are above minus 10. So let's flip to chart two. And, um, oh, that, this is kind of. No, we're going to go to chart four, right? Oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Chart, but I, yeah, I see chart, chart two of gold. Chart. I get it. I get it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Right. Anyhow, the, the top window is the cumulative up-down volume percent. And uh, last time, or last Thursday, I think we showed this, and it was just right on that line. Yes. And and uh, so so now you got you, you finally got through that line, and I circled the, the ones in blue uh, and with uh, blue lines when that signal occurred, and okay. I circled it in red when that uh, cumulative uh, up-down volume, actually the, the signal comes when you pass, when you close above the mid-Bollinger band. Okay. So go back to that first signal back in, uh, what, November, I guess? Yeah. can't read. So anyhow, it, it passed above the mid-Bollinger band, stayed on that signal until uh, looks like about uh, April, mid-April, closed below the mid-Bollinger band, that's where that red line comes from. Yeah. And actually, if you notice, the, the market rallied again in uh, May, and that indicator didn't hardly move. Yeah. It stayed I'm, below I'm the Bollinger Band. Up. Right now, as you're speaking, just so they can see another one, you can see that. I mean, it's decisive, folks. I mean, it was it was leaning on it yesterday, and today it's there, big time. Okay, go ahead, yeah. man. What a trip. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyhow, so in May it did a double top on GDX. Yes. So and if you notice that indicator, the top one, it didn't, you know, it never even closed above the mid Bollinger band. So it stayed on the sell signal. Right. Even though the market went back and tested that high. So I thought that was that's kind of an cool. important issue. Yeah, that's really cool, man. And yeah, they're really yeah. cool. So it gave a buy signal, you know, in uh, July and gave a, a sell signal end of July, first of August. And that trade looked like about a break even. You bought it and pretty, um, pretty much closed. You bought it and sold about the same spot. So that's you know, yeah, not bad, I guess. You know, not all the indicators are perfect, but this one's pretty good. Now uh, you got to close, you know, a different type of method, kind of using a similar indicators, okay, but in a di different way. Now you're closing above the mid Bollinger band, so that's that's a, a bullish signal. Yes. So. So now they're piling I want to, up, I want to look man. At the, they're piling up. <laughs> yeah, they're piling up. So, so this is pretty good. So now you want to look at the bigger time frames okay. to see where you are. And so this next chart, which is chart number five. Okay. Now, now this is a monthly chart. It goes yep. back, uh, I don't know, two thousand seven or something. And uh, so same same type of indicator. It's a it's the monthly cumulative. Advanced decline on the bottom window. Okay. And the top window is a monthly cumulative advance up down volume, both of them for GDX. Now the the bottom window, I've I've marked all the signals going back as far as I could. Yes. And it basically got the top in uh big top back in two thousand twelve, gave a sell signal and stayed on that sell signal in two it, to uh, basically two thousand sixteen. And that was a long time, uh, I know, man. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, but if you notice, if you look at the bottom window there, this indicator 
it's kind of been going sideways since uh, mid 2022. Yeah, and so to me, it's it's kind of a building a base. And are you above the mid Bollinger Band? Yeah, uh, you're on it. Yeah, and so, but if you look at the timing of those previous signals all the way back to 2016, they usually about a year, year and a half. Yes, you know, between between all those signals. Well, we're approximately from the last signal. You know, we're due for a, a, a signal right here because of the previous type signals giving that signal about every year and a half. So you're due for a big signal right here, right now. And you know what's so, so cool, Tim? When you actually look at this here, I'll put this other chart up, folks, and it'll blow it up a little for you so you can see it. We really, you know, even though it seemed like, you know, this was quite a downdraft, that wasn't too much of a retracement, actually. <laughs> you know, from no. the lows to the highs to where we were here, you know? And so that's, that's intriguing also, right? You know, even though that, uh, you know, uh, because particularly because you know the dollar's giving it up today, and you know if it continues to give it up, well, you know the metals want a higher price, man. So it's going to be intriguing watching this shake out. Yeah, what well, yeah, what what goes forward, and what this indicators do? I mean, their advanced decline of the GDX and their yes. up down volume for GDX. Well, that's the whole interwining mechanisms of what the stocks are doing in GDX. Right. So this is. So this is really kind of gives you a real clear picture, not a false picture, but what, what is actually happening in the uh, GDX, uh, you know, the stocks in GDX. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it, yeah, so it's, it's, it's kind of an important indicator. So it doesn't, it's never, it's, it's, I don't know, I guess you can whip you around, but it's never really going to lie to you. Yeah. So I think that's what's kind of important on this. Well, indicator. listen, Tim, so. it's always a pleasure. We really, you know, you know, appreciate the uh, great education you've been giving us. And don't forget, folks, okay, he's on every Tuesday, Thursday. If you want to see a trip, man, go back a few Tuesdays and Thursdays so you can see the how this came up, okay, step by step. And the bottom line is that it's a stair step, and it worked out like ASAP 100%. Tim, have a great one, safe one. Look forward to speaking to Thursday.